Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test It, and I have a new phone to give you a quick look at today. No, it's not the new iPhone 10. We'll talk about that later. It's an Android phone actually just announced this week, and we have an early unit. This is the Razer phone. Yes, Razer, the people who make gaming keyboards, gaming mice, laptops, all sorts of accessories with, you know, their RGB LED configurable lights. Well, they also now are making a phone. Thankfully, this phone doesn't have RGB lights on it. I think that would be a little garish. But let's take a look at this phone, pop it out of the box. Um, it looks like a black monolith, almost like the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey, doesn't it? Now, uh, what makes this phone unique, a couple of things, right? It's a, first of all, it's a high-end phone, top of the line, you have your Snapdragon Qualcomm 835 chip on the inside, and you also have 64 gigs of storage, but also, eight gigs of RAM, eight gigs of memory. Now, one of the reasons phone manufacturers don't put so much memory into their phones is because there's a lot of passive power consumption when you pack it full of RAM. So power consumption is something that I'm concerned about as we're gonna be testing this. Another thing that's gonna be affecting power consumption is the screen. And I would call this maybe the flagship feature of the Razer phone. It has here a 2560 by 1440 screen, and it is an LCD screen, not an OLED, but one of the reasons they chose an LCD screen is because this phone runs at 120 hertz. You, that means you can play games at 120 frames per second, and more importantly, the UI, the home screen, web browsing using Twitter, 120 hertz. And no phone, no pocket mobile device has had that type of screen before that I know of. Yes, the Apple iPad Pro has had 120 hertz screen, but not the new iPhone. And one of the reasons is because power consumption. Right, we know OLED screens can go up to 90 hertz. We've used them on our VR devices, but LCDs with 120 hertz screen, what does that mean day to day? Well, opening up something like Chrome and scrolling on a web browser, it's incredibly smooth. It's so smooth. It's something that going back to my essential phone, I, I feel like I miss it immediately. And running a frame rate counter on the phone, I can tell it doesn't run at 120 hertz the whole time. It's variable. So when I'm at the home screen and I'm just scrolling around or not doing anything, when it's a static image, it will step down to something like 15 FPS. But if I'm actually actively scrolling or launching a game, it will run at up to that 120 frames per second. Now, if you're going to play a game at 1440p, it may not be able to run at the full 120 hertz, but it has a technology that's similar to, you know, G-Sync on your gaming PC. They call it Ultra Motion, and so it's actually going to scale the game and uh, sync it to the refresh rate of the screen, so you're not going to get that screen tearing. And so far, in playing games at native resolution, even at 80 frames per second, 90 frames per second, no screen tearing whatsoever. But going back to the power consumption thing, what does it mean when you have a screen that's trying to refresh so much? If I'm just scrolling through Twitter, scrolling through Facebook at 120 hertz, that's going to drain a lot of power. To that end, there is a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in here, and Razer says that will last you a full day of use. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I've only had this phone for a couple hours so far. But you can also adjust the phone settings and not run it at that full 120 hertz. In the settings menu, you can actually tone it down to between 60, 90, or 120 hertz at its maximum. And Razer says that, that, that 90 hertz is probably that sweet spot for battery life and also for that silky smooth scrolling performance. But in my initial use, I really wanna keep it at that 120 because it just looks so great. You can also adjust the resolution at what you display everything at down to 720p and scale it up to the screen so it gets a little bit dithering in the text. And that's again, if you wanna consume less power. The other couple notable features on this phone, you'll notice there's a big forehead and a big chin on this phone. It's kind of not doing the edge to edge um, the format that a lot of the phone companies are doing right now, and that's because these are speakers. And Razer has designed this phone to be used in a landscape orientation because they think that gamers are going to want to play their games, watch their movies in the landscape orientation. And these speakers are actually uh, configured and certified for Dolby Atmos. Now, it's not going to be the same Dolby Atmos as you get if you watch a a movie that's actually in a Dolby theater, but it is certified for Dolby Atmos. It gets pretty loud. Running the Dolby Atmos demo, which it's not gonna come across in this video, I can tell you that it sounds really clear, 
when it's very loud. It's probably the loudest mobile phone I've used so far. I wouldn't say that the bass gives me that chest thumping feel, uh, but at least for the highs and the mids, they sound pretty pitch clean um, at that as high at that high decibel volume. Now, also talking about audio on the bottom, you do see there is a USB-C port, but there is no headphone jack. Razer, like many other smartphone manufacturers, are removing the headphone jack, but they are including a headphone jack adapter in the box. And in this adapter, which plugs into USB-C, they actually have built in a 24-bit DAC, so you can play some lossless audio through here to your headphones. That's a nice little bit of a consolation. Also on the side, you've noticed that the volume buttons are what they would consider on the top of the phone, on the, and on the other side of the phone, flush with the sides, so you can actually stand up and not fall over, is its home button, the on button, and there's a built-in fingerprint sensor here as well. On the back, you see there are two cameras and a flash. And the cameras, one is a wide angle and one is a telephoto with a smaller aperture. But in the camera app, you can't actually switch between the wide angle and the telephoto. All you can do is pinch to zoom and it will automatically switch between them. Razer says that they're using some sort of camera fusion to give you that seamless switch. I would have preferred being able to toggle between using the wide angle and the telephoto uh, like you can on some other phones. And even the wide angle, I don't think is all that much of a wide angle. Uh, the other thing is that this camera app runs at 30 FPS, so I, I wish they could have used the camera app and combined it with that 120 hertz screen to give you really smooth um, uh, viewfinder, LCD viewfinder as you're taking your photos. I think that would have been a really nice feature. Um, it does take a SIM card and it's GSM only on this, no CDMA, and in the same slot you can actually put it on a micro SD card to expand storage to as much as you want. Uh, the home screen, it is their custom version, but it includes Nova Launcher and it does come built in with some shortcuts for games that download, so it's not stock Android at all. Um, it's running Android Nougat and Android Oreo support will be coming next year, even though the phone is shipping this year. That's always a big question with these phones is how fast can their engineers uh, adapt to the new version of Android, especially when they have to do things like code in 120 hertz support, Dolby Atmos certification on all its other features. So that's just a quick look at the Razer phone. It is available for pre-order, I believe, today, November 3rd, shipping later this month or sometime soon. 64 gigs of storage, Snapdragon 835, 8 gigs of RAM. $700 is its list price for an unlocked phone. Um, I think it's definitely an interesting phone. Uh, I will be interested to see how battery life compares, but 120 hertz on a screen, I gotta tell you. It's pretty sweet. It's tough to move away from that. And it's something at least, even if this phone doesn't succeed, I hope it's pushing other phone makers to go to 120 hertz, try to push for that, push for that higher refresh rate, because it is a benefit that you notice in your everyday use with every movement on your phone. So we'll be back with more tech coverage, more reviews on Tested.com. I'm Norm, and I'll see you next time.